Have you ever wondered what makes someone RH negative? It's such a rare and fascinating trait, and it all comes down to genetics. In this video, we're gonna break it all down. How RH negative blood is inherited, why it's so uncommon, and what it might tell us about our family history. If you've ever been curious about the science behind your blood type, and specifically your RH status, this is gonna be really interesting. Before we get into the genetics of RH negative blood, let's quickly cover the basics. Blood types are a part of what makes each of us unique. You probably heard of the main ones, A, B, AB, and O. It's called the ABO system, and it's based on specific markers that are on your red blood cells. Now the RH factor is another marker. If you have it, you're RH positive. If you don't, you're RH negative. It's as simple as that. So when we talk about blood types, we're actually combining these two systems. For example, someone could be a positive, that's A type blood with RH positive, or O negative, O type blood, and they don't have the RH marker. So what's interesting about this is that while the ABO types are pretty evenly spread around the world, RH negative is much rarer. And that's where genetics come in. So let's dig into how it's inherited. It comes down to the genes that you inherit from your parents. So the RH factor is determined by two genes, one gene from each parent. The RH positive gene is dominant, which means it takes charge, while the RH negative gene is recessive, and that is a large part of the reason why it becomes so rare. The sperm and the egg, also known as the gametes, each contribute one RH gene. So every person has two RH genes. Each one can be a capital D, representing RH positive, or a lowercase d, representing RH negative. If you have two capital Ds, you're definitely gonna be RH positive. If you have one capital D and one lowercase d, you're also RH positive because the RH positive gene is dominant. And if you have two lowercase d's, you're gonna be RH negative. Now, if you have two lowercase d's or two uppercase d's, you're what's called homozygous. And if you have one uppercase d and one lowercase d, you're heterozygous. Now, let's take a look at what happens when the gametes of these different variations come together to make a baby. There are basically six possible situations here. Remember, uppercase D is an RH positive gene and lowercase D is an RH negative gene. If you have two gametes, both from homozygous positive RH people, then you're 100% for sure gonna have a child that's RH positive. If you have one gamete from homozygous positive and you have one gamete from heterozygous positive, again, because that RH positive gene is dominant, 100% for sure the offspring is gonna be RH positive. Then if you have one gamete from homozygous positive and one gamete from homozygous negative, again, 100% RH positive offspring because you have the dominant positive gene. Now it gets a little more complex. If both gametes are heterozygous positive, meaning capital D, lowercase d, and they come together and cross, 75% chance is that the offspring is gonna be RH positive, 25% chance is gonna be RH negative. So two RH positive parents, if they're both heterozygous positive, could theoretically produce RH negative offspring. Then if you have one gamete that comes from heterozygous positive and the other from homozygous negative, it's gonna be a 50-50 split. 50% chance the offspring is gonna be RH positive, 50% chance the offspring is gonna be RH negative. And finally, if both parents are homozygous negative, 100% chance that the offspring is gonna be RH negative. So this is in part why RH negative blood is relatively rare. For someone to become RH negative, they need to inherit two RH negative genes, which means that both of their parents need to either be RH negative themselves or at least carry the RH negative gene. Pretty wild, right? Now, RH negative blood isn't just rare, it's also not spread out evenly over the world, which makes it even more intriguing. For example, around 15% of people with European ancestry are RH negative, while in other parts of the world, like Asia and Africa, it's much less common. You see more like one to 2% RH negative people in these areas. And then there's the Basque population in Spain and France who have one of the highest concentrations of RH negative blood found anywhere in the world. And scientists have been scratching their head for years trying to figure out why. Maybe it's because their ancestors lived in isolation for so long, or maybe there's some other evolutionary explanation that we haven't really discovered yet. Theories about where RH negative blood came from range from the scientific to 
pretty out there. Some researchers suggest that it could have offered certain survival advantages like resistance to diseases or environmental conditions, which might explain why it persisted in certain populations. Others believe it could just be the result of random genetic drift, where certain traits stick around just by chance. But then there are the more unconventional ideas. One of the more popular theories is that Rh negative blood has alien origins. The thinking goes that Rh negative individuals could be the descendants of extraterrestrial beings that came to the planet a long time ago. While there's obviously no concrete scientific evidence to back this up, it's a pretty interesting and fun idea that has captured a lot of imaginations. Another theory ties Rh negative blood to biblical stories or myths about advanced ancient civilizations, suggesting that it might be a remnant of a time when humans had closer connections to divine or supernatural beings. These theories aren't proven for now, but it's definitely something that's pretty fascinating to think about. So why does the Rh factor even matter? Well, it turns out that it can play a pretty big role in health and medicine, especially when it comes to pregnancy and blood transfusions. Let's start with pregnancy. So if an Rh negative mother is carrying an Rh positive baby, their blood types can clash. The mom's immune system might see the baby's Rh positive blood as a threat and start making antibodies against it. And this can cause problems, especially in later pregnancies if those antibodies stick around. So thankfully, there's a simple fix to this these days. You have an injection called Rogam, and it stops the mother's immune system from reacting to the baby's blood. And so this makes Rh incompatibility much less of an issue than it used to be. It used to be the case that if an Rh negative mother gave birth to the Rh positive baby, it might not be possible for her to carry another Rh positive baby after that. Now let's talk about blood donations. An Rh negative person can donate to someone who's Rh negative or positive, but an Rh negative person can't receive blood from an Rh positive person. So because Rh negative blood is so rare, it's always in pretty high demand. All right, so we've covered a lot about Rh negative blood, how it's inherited, where it's the most common, why it matters in health and medicine, and even some of the wild theories about its origins. It's amazing how something as simple as a protein on your red blood cells can spark so much curiosity and have such a big impact. Now it's your turn. Are you Rh negative or do you know someone who is? Have you ever wondered about the stories behind your own blood type? Share your thoughts and experiences down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this dive into the fascinating world of Rh negative blood, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next video. We'll be exploring even more intriguing topics about health, history, and the mysteries of the human body. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing you all again next time.